Welcome, friends, to this fourth Sunday of Advent. As we gather together today, we are going to simply come and share in some carols of Christmas, some hymns of Christmas, and some scriptures. And as we read and reflect upon these scriptures together today, they will share the story of the fall of humanity, the prophecies of the one to come, the one who would redeem, and yes, the birth of Jesus the Christ. But before we share in that time of worship together, I believe it's fitting on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, as we light the fourth candle, a symbol of love. Love represents that wonderful story, that story of good news, the gospel, all the way from Genesis through Revelation. And so it is that story of redeeming love that we want to share in together today and proclaim through singing and spoken word. So would you listen now as Lois lights the fourth Advent candle. The lighting of the fourth candle. Love. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evil doers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord from 2 Samuel 7, 1 to 11 and verse 16. And Romans 16, 25 to 27. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel, and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God and Lord God Almighty, we give you thanks for sending us a mighty Savior, the God of love, the God who won the victory for us, 
We thank you for sending your only Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to be our Savior, that we might live uh, fearless, that we might live in hope, that we might live um, with joy and peace, that we might be able to spread the life of Christ to others by trusting in him, for he has done for us what no one else could do. He is the ruler supreme, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We praise you and thank you for this opportunity to remember, to reflect, to give praise to you, the Lord God Almighty. So we thank you and praise you and seek your face always that you would be our strength forever. In Jesus' name, amen. When the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked. Have you eaten from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat? The man replied, It was the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. Then the Lord God asked the woman, have, What have you done? The serpent deceived me, she replied. That's why I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed, more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains." By the sweat of your brow, you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you are made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. I wonder as I wander out under the sky. How Jesus the Savior did come forth to die for poor ornery people like you and like I. I wonder as I wander out under the sky when Mary birthed Jesus twas shepherds and all, but high from God's heaven a star's light did fall, and the promise of ages it then did recall. If Jesus had wanted for any we thing, a star in sky or a bird on the wing or all of God's angels in heaven to sing he surely could have it cause he was the king then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says, because you have obeyed me and have not withheld even your son, your only son, I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their armies. 
and through your descendants, all the nations of earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me.
The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and his peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passion commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. As we continue in our time together today, the next carol that we are going to listen to is O Holy Night. And I suspect it's one you've heard before, perhaps in many different versions. But the version you are going to hear me share in just a few moments is probably unlike any other you have ever heard. I was privileged to hear this rendition just a few weeks ago by an artist by the name of Ben Kaplan, who was based out of Halifax. He worked with arranger Peter Tonyi to put this together, and I was absolutely captivated by the moving reharmonization of this classic Christmas piece. Now you might wonder, even as you listen and hear the first few notes in the harmonization, where is this going? This does not sound anything like what we've heard before when it comes to a holy night. Friends, what I would like to suggest to you today, as you listen to this beautifully captured rendition by Ben Kaplan and his team, and he has graciously granted me permission to put vocals to this, as you listen, know this, Christ came and he cut through the chaos that was the world in which he entered much like the world that you and i are in today in the midst of chaos and as the song continues to build and you hear the string section build and all these notes going around and it might just sound for a moment like but a bunch of noise remember this that Christ cut through that chaos. And as he cut through it, it truly was a holy night as God in the flesh came to live and breathe and experience life as you and I do. And that is what I want you to focus on today as you hear this beautifully put rendition. And just before I share it, would you listen closely to these words from the prophet Isaiah. Out of a stump of David's family will grow a shoot, yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root, and the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance, nor make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word. And one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion. And a little child will lead them all. The cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. And now it's my privilege to share with you that beautifully rearranged piece 
arranged by Peter Tanyi as originally recorded by Ben Kaplan, O Holy Night. are brightly shining It is the night of the dear Savior's birth Long may the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul it's worth a thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your Yeah.
splendor left behind the king of glory born to die god and man to reconcile you came to offer up your life this is love Sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. As Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her.
time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was a, the baby lying in the manger. Thank you. 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. They went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod.
In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him, and nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the lights that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him.